Here we are for part two of my look at the new Perry miniatures, Russian Ullans miniatures, 1812-1814, the most recent of their plastic miniatures kits for the Napoleonic period. And as you can see before you, I've put together a selection of them as a follow-up to my video just looking at the contents. So to dive straight in, on the left-hand side here are four of the Russian Ullans as they come uh, out of the box. So I've created uh, two troopers with their lances there um, and then I've created the uh, trumpeter and the officer. Uh, very straightforward to put together. Um, if you've got familiarity with the uh, Perry uh, plastic kits uh, these shouldn't come as any real surprise to you. Um, the horses go together fairly well in three bits. There's maybe slight gaps behind the uh, sort, of, uh, sort of back of the cheek and jawbone where it goes uh, into the rest of the body but that's about it in terms of that. Um, and a few maybe gaps along some of the bridling, but nothing too bad that, frankly, you couldn't hide just with a paint job as opposed to needing to fill those gaps. Um, <clears throat> and then the figures go together pretty nicely, really. As you can see there, some dynamic expressions. That's the uh, officer's, uh, off the officer's sprue. And you can see he's got his sash to denote that on. Uh, and he's shouting something, or otherwise uh, gesticulating in general, as officers are wont to do. And then... That is the trumpeter, who I've angled up to look like he's actually using his trumpet a little bit, uh, as opposed to just having it near him. And then we've got two of the uh, troopers uh, themselves. Very nice they are too, so I've got them with the couched lances there, as opposed to upright, um, as they move forward. There's nothing to add, like carbines or anything of that nature, although there are some very... Um, short, like almost like sawn off shotgun style uh, carbines, so you could create some flankers, um, including one where it's, it's, it's being held upraised, which uh, is available on the Perry website to have a look at a version of one of those, because they put one together as an example. Uh, but yeah, they went together pretty nicely, really. Um, as I say, not having to trim the mould lines off the front of the face or anything, I keep banging on about that, but it makes a huge difference. And uh, the biggest thing to take away from these miniatures uh, it should be the most obvious thing in terms of any vulnerabilities or fragilities is going to be the lances. Now, the only miniatures I have with lances in the Napoleonic period are Perry and Kalp um, figures, and obviously there's a metal, and then I've put in steel lances and fixed them into their hands, and oh, apart from anything else, those can do much more actual damage to you. They're very, very much more robust. These, obviously, as you can see, are flexible plastic. If you get that wrong, um, if you drop anything on them, or you always pick them up, or catch yourself on them in a certain way, that is going to bend and potentially snap um, without too much effort, so you'd have to be pretty careful of that. It might be possible to replace them, but it would be a bit of a long-winded and faffy job to cut that off both sides and then uh, drill it through. You could do it. I mean, I've, I've done drilling through bits of plastic a little bit deeper than that on the odd occasion for a one-off model, but if you're going to do that for a whole regiment, um, you might find that to be a bit of a pain. So it's one to be aware of that in the great miniatures, it's going to help you get the uh, units together pretty quickly, but vulnerable to breakages. So that's something to take into account. Not really even easy to shield them with the basing as you might with other miniatures by creating extra depth. It might help a little bit, but ultimately, you know, they're up here and if they've got the upraised lances, as I'll show you in a moment, um, they're potentially even more vulnerable. But otherwise, um, nice figures to put together. They look very smart. Uh, some people have mentioned, and I've thought about it, conversion possibilities outside of using actual other parts, maybe paint jobs. They're not really suitable to be um, Polish Olans or Lancers in French service, um, largely because, um, as I understand it, the cords on the Polish Zapkas come down on the other side. They don't have the sunburst plate and the eagle on, although I have seen some images and colour plates or lithographs where they don't have that, and they have a very similar um, setup to these uh, pieces of Russian headgear. But, you know, you always have to check the veracity of the sources. I'm not too sure about them. It might have been in the earlier period of the of the Napoleonic Wars. They looked a bit like that. Um, similar for the Vistula Olans. The uniform detailing isn't quite right. And you'll find that the uh, Polish Olans and Lancers in French service have actual fringed epaulettes, not these versions. Um, and that can be misleading in some pictures if you look online, um, where it says, oh, Polish Olans. Those are quite likely, misleadingly, pictures of the the Russian Ulans, these figures, and it's their Polish regiment because there are others with um, regimental names similar to their infantry and other outfits like the Volhynia Ulans, but there's one called the Polish Ulans and that's what brings up in those search returns, so don't be um, misled by that. 
with a bit of you know cutting and, and you know maybe a little bit of addition of green stuff if you want to sculpt and conversion by paint you could maybe turn them into other things but at a minimum you're going to need to fringe their epaulettes move their cords and add detailing to the sapka um, and that's only off the top of my head here without getting really into the weeds about it um, i'm sure other people who've got far more current knowledge on that would be able to weigh in um, if they so desired Anyway, that's by the by. In terms of what else you can do with the kit, which is the most exciting thing about it, you know, straightforward figures, very nice, but it's the um, cross compatibility that's the most attractive thing about it. We'll swing over to these figures instead. Uh, so just to zoom out slightly. Um, so what I've done here is, uh, following the instructions on the leaflet that comes in the box, I've created uh, a group of Prussian Landwehr using the using this set and mixtures of other sets. So what these figures comprise of, if you don't know already, is um, actually the body, head uh, and, and legs uh, from the Russian and Prussian cav Allied Cavalry set that was already released. The horses are the French-like cavalry horses to give the, uh, oh, oh dear, the proper saddlery essentially and like the fringing and so on. Because if I were to show you the difference between this and a Russian Alain, and there you are. It gives you a bit of an example, uh, and it's also the reason you can't use the horses out of the box for the Allied Cavalry set because similarly they don't have this, um, you know, sheepskin throw and um, diamond edged fringed bits to the saddlery as well. Um, they have the other version, which uh, would be incorrect. So I've used uh, those horses from the French Light Cavalry set, the Allied Cavalry bodies and heads, and then actually the bit that you need from the Russian Alans is. The lance arm and in this case I've used the upraised lance arm and you can see how potentially that could go very very wrong and end up with snap lances and sad faces all round but they all fit together pretty well what I will say is a little bit of conversion required because you need to take some of the uniform detailing off the lance arm um, which is present on the Russian Alans so for comparison's sake sorry I keep knocking these over um, there is basically a seam and a piece of extra material that runs down the arm on the back of the Russian Olans and also the buttons and cuffs are slightly different so you'll need to um, get a bit of a knife and scrape those off and redo it and potentially just convert that with paint um, or you know if you really wanted to you could put the buttons on somehow but essentially yeah it requires you just to take some of the additional seams and material off and convert the cuff it's a pretty quick job you know a little bit of scraping with a, a modeling knife on top of the work you're already doing um, and that's how you put those figures together. Um, one thing I did notice is that you don't get many uh, sheathed swords in the Russian Alans kit if you're talking about, uh, not in the Russian Alans kit, sorry, correction, in the Allied Cavalry set because that one is for them charging with swords drawn in the main, so you don't have them, but there are a number of these spare in the Russian Alans kit that I've then just cut slightly to make them fit on the straps a bit better, and then you can give the uh, these guys um, swords. Although being Landwehr Cavalry, I suppose no reason you could have had them just with lances because they've been poorly equipped, perhaps they've not been issued with swords uh, quite yet due to equipment shortages. Uh, and another straightforward conversion, uh, so these are the uh, Perry indicated way to do the, just the line Prussian Alans, the regular cavalry versions. Uh, and again the legs and bodies and heads etc have all been taken from the Allied Cavalry set, the horses from the French Light Cavalry, uh, which I bought as an additional sprue. Just zoom in a bit more so you can have a better look. Uh, and then the lance arms taken from the Russian Alans kit. And again, a little bit of uh, chopping and painting is going to require just to finish off the uh, arm and make sure that you know, the details match the existing arm and button arrangement. Uh, and that's how we did those. What I will say is one of the al Allied cavalry bodies is the one leaning into the gallop. And that works very well for a couched lance, as you can see here. Um, because he's leaning forwards and he really looks like he's properly charging down with that lance and leaning into it. And then the final figure uh, that I did was this officer's figure. So this is again using the French Light Cavalry horse and then just actually using only bits from the Allied Cavalry Command Sprue. Didn't require anything from the Russian Ullans, but I just thought it'd be kind of nice to add that as an officer for those Landwehr Cavalry. Uh, and then you've got, as I say, the, the Lion Ullans there. With that really nice leaning into the leaning into the gallop pose so yeah very easy to do um it's been thought through so the parts are very much compatible let's get everybody back in so you can sort of see them in terms of scale wise they all match up scale wise of course because it's the same sculptors um 
Yeah, very nice kit. Easy to put together. Be careful with the lances, including trimming them down because um, where they clip them off, you have to take the tags off and you also need to take the mould line off the actual lance haft. And if you get that wrong, you might slant, slice your lance in half. Um, but otherwise, that's the benefit of it because using the lances up to create these Prussian cavalry didn't take away from the Russian Ulans because you get twice as many lances as you need for the Russian figures because you get enough that they could all have them couched and enough that you could have them all raised, so which gives you options for that, but of course what the Perrys have done is enabled you to have enough parts that you can do those and convert Prussian cavalry as well. That's it for this follow-up video on the Russian Ulans and a look at some of the options you've got for merging them with the other Perry Plastic Miniatures products. Let me know if you plan on getting some of these or what conversions you've made out of them or perhaps any conversions you've thought of doing that I haven't thought of yet or that others might be interested in, including ways perhaps of uh, creating those Polish or other Ulans that aren't so easy to do. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.